Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2022 Bowman Baseball. This is Jumbo Edition, it's only eight boxes. Pick your team number three, eight boxes, but some more cards per pack, a lot of great stuff. The Jumbo, you get three autographs per box. Brand new release just dropped yesterday. And big thanks to everybody here for making it happen, appreciate it. And it was Andrew with Last Spot Mojo. And if you have a little rooftop next to your name, that means you won that spot in the filler. So this is eight box jumbo. Pick your team number three. All right, there's the jumbo case right there. Eight, 12 count. Eight boxes, 12 packs per box. Jumbo. All right, three autographs per box on average, I guess. Although I think it's rare that we've seen extra autographs or rare that we've seen uh, fewer autographs. So I think, I think we'll, three is just about right. All right, boys and girls, good luck. All right, I think all the scores in baseball are finals, ladies and gentlemen, here on May the 5th, 2022. Angels shut out the Red Sox, 8 nothing. Shohei Otani, double-digit strikeouts, had an RBI off the monster, too, in Boston. Brewers beat the lowly Reds, 10-5, to poor Reds. They're, they fall to 3-22. and Colorado just wins in overtime, the avalanche, that is. Rockies also won today, so the state of Colorado is happy. Rockies 9, Nationals 7. In a game that featured 25 total hits, everyone had the over, right? Blue Jays fell to the Guardians 6-5. to five. In Philadelphia, Phillies were up 7-1 going into the top of the ninth. Mets scored eight, 7 runs in the top of the ninth. To lead 8-7 going to the bottom of the ninth, and that was that. In Baltimore, Orioles beat the Twins 5-3. In Houston, Astros beat the uh, beat the Tigers 3-2. That looks like a walk-off situation, too. It was tied. No, the Astros are leading 2-0 to the top of the ninth. Tigers scored two runs in the top of the ninth, and then... Astros got the walk-off. I was on the Mariners tonight, but they lost 4-3. to three. <sighs> Score, that sucks. Predators played so good today. Yeah, they did. Padres beat the Marlins 2-1. I was on the Padres. And the Cardinals beat the Giants 7-1. Every series is tied minus this one and I think Florida's uh, or Carolina's. Like, everybody, like, either got destroyed in the first game and then lost won the, the second game and got destroyed themselves. Except this one and uh, uh, Hurricanes. They're the only two team games that are up to all. Uh, everybody else is 1-1. One, one. Hmm. Nothing more exciting than, like, uh, Game 7 in sports. Yeah. So I'd like to see some of that. There's Benny Montgomery, uh, blue, for the Rockies. Eighth overall pick, top 10 pick there for the Rocks. Andrew with the Rockies. Was the largest... It Was it the largest ninth inning comeback? I don't think so. But I did see, during that game, I did see a crazy stat where the Mets were 0-330 games 
when going into the ninth inning down by at least six runs. So that made it seem like there's been, you know, which they, the announcers anyway, I didn't get any context. I don't know if that's the same for a lot of teams or if it's not. They made it seem like it was not that the Mets were outliers. So that thing, I think that was dating back to like the mid-90s. The Mets, if they were down by six going into the ninth inning, they hadn't made a comeback until tonight. Which is kind of crazy to think about because because in that time span, you know, there's been a there's been a couple of different eras of great great Mets teams. the biggest ninth inning comeback is that's a that's that would be an interesting thing to look up there's our second autograph Darren Baker that's Dusty Baker's kid that is 006 out of 100 atomic refractor autograph he hit a walk off home run for his uh there may, he, he was the kid that was pulled from the field by JT Snow um, he hit a walk-off home run the night his dad won his 2000th game as a manager. I think that was just a couple nights ago. There's a lava parallel, Braylon uh, Minier to 399. Is there another game still happening? Oh, they're doing the post-game show on TBS. Actually, maybe a little, uh, maybe since during this baseball break, we can have a little, uh, little, MLB Network on in the background. A little quick pitch. Great, great, uh, great whip around show. And there's Jordan Lawler to 250, purple chrome for Andrew and the Diamondbacks. Should be one more autograph. Oh, there it is. There's Garrett Mitchell, Fuchsia for the Brew Crew. Fuchsia Paper. That'll be for Mark Bissette and the Brewers. There's our third and final autograph of the box, Ronnie uh, Henriquez. Henriquez for the Rangers, Mark, with that one as well. Ooh, nice. Thanks, Gilo. Gilo looked it up for us. Biggest ninth inning comeback. I guess the Mets were close. Mets Mets made uh, scored seven runs in the top of the ninth to win the game. The F uh, Phillies have the largest ninth inning comeback, scoring nine runs in the ninth inning. They did it back in 1990. Who they beat? Oh, they beat the Dodgers. I, those some of those early '90s Dodgers teams were really bad. After their, you know, it was just yeah, there were some lean years for the Dodgers in the '90s. 
feel like like the Lakers and the Dodgers both had a lot of success in the eighties, Lakers especially, but and after that kind of generation of players there, then it some lean times in the nineties. Tim saying go Giants. Rough couple games for the Giants. Didn't look too good against the Dodgers. I think they're missing a lot of players, but they fell 7-1 to the Cardinals today. I think they're getting some guys back. I think Yastrzemski's back. Getting a little healthier. Anthony saying they should have held on to Pedro Martinez way back when. Yeah, they really should have. Who the who was the trade? That was for that was for Delino De Shields, right? You got to convert Joe into a Giants fan. How do you, how how do you think you're going to do that? It's going to be pretty difficult considering I'm a lifelong Dodgers fan. My earliest childhood memories is going to the Dodgers games. You shouldn't trust anybody who converts from their favorite lifelong team to to your to your rival team. That's suspect. I'm not that kind of person. Saying that is almost, thinking you can even do that sounds almost insulting. And you think I'm weak-minded enough to, to convert like that? I'm calling my character into question at this point. And that's not a bad card to have, a little kershaw Lincecum duel. Auto, dual, rookie auto to five. Delino to Shields, I think, was the trade, right, Anthony? I'm a good guy. I should be a Giants fan. That will, that's how I'm a Dodgers fan. I'm the good guys. Yeah, I think the Dodgers traded traded. Pedro Martinez, who is Ramon Martinez's brother. Some of you may remember Ramon Martinez. There's Martin Jimenez. And they said Pedro Martinez was too small. He'd get injured often. And I think uh, they traded him for Delino De Shields, who was, who was all right. Um, maybe some other players, but that was pretty much the bulk of the deal. And then... Uh, And then he went on to be one of the most durable pitchers in baseball, and for the most part. What, uh, what is your? Uh, everyone has their their teams, their teams uh, bad trade. What was your team's bad trade? There's Ian Lewis to 150 blue paper for Mark N and the Marlins. Dodgers did another kind of poor trade. Uh, they traded away, remember the Paul Canerco trade, which at the time, I think, no, at the time, Paul Canerco didn't end up being what he ended up being, but 
But they traded him for a closer, I think. Jeff Shaw. And that, uh, and then Canerico turned out to be a pretty solid first baseman. Maybe in recent memory. I don't want Red Sox fans being like, well, the babe. Like the last maybe, last few decades or so. For Rex, Eloy Jimenez, that's right. Eloy Jimenez. Although he's not been able to stay healthy, so... I don't know. But there's uh, Andre Lara, 75 out of 499 for Han and the Nationals. Won that team in the filler. For Greg, the Giants got getting rid of Joe Nathan or Duvall, maybe not keeping Brian Reynolds more recently. There's Luis Rodriguez to 150. Do the Brewers have a have a bell in their in their dugout? All right, next box. Another three autographs, and, and of course, as always with any break that's usually I do this any break that's over like 35, 40 minutes. We'll do a little recap at the end. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, there's a good one. I think. Uh, speaking of Bowman baseball, I think Tatis, Fernando Tatis Jr.'s first, I think is actually a uh, is a White Sox card. Tatis for James Shields was the trade. That's a that's a rough one. So don't feel so bad, Rex. The, the White Sox have giveth and taketh away. <laughs> I, I remember Greg Maddox as a Dodger for a little bit. I don't remember that. I didn't remember that as a trade for Cesar's Tourist. I don't remember that. I don't remember the Wheeler for Beltran deal. There was the classic, uh, the Jeff Bagwell deal, Red Sox to uh, Red Sox to Houston. Wait, did the Pirates trade Barry Bonds to the Giants? I actually don't remember that. Was that a? F I thought that was a free agent thing. Maybe it was a trade. Yeah, that that would be that would be a bad trade on the Pirates' part. We're talking. We're talking about. Oh, you don't know. Tim, we're talking about trades, like what were like the bad trades of whatever team you support. But yeah, if you're a White Sox guy, I think Anthony's right. That's a in more recent memory, that's gotta be one of the one of the bad trades. Right, yeah, the Cubs will find out if trading away Bryant Rizzo Baez those whoever they got from those trades they turn out to be something 27 out of 150 Jason Santana speaking of the Cubs that's for Angel that was in the U Darvish trade so this is, this is one of the guys to look out for Cubs fans see if that trade how that trade pays off in the end
Sean, what's up? Any good Yankee cards yet? Not yet. Not in this break. In previous breaks, yes. But not yet here. But we're not, not even halfway through this one. There's Alexander Ramirez for the Halos. Blue, uh, sorry, check that Aqua Shimmer to 125. That'll be for Mark B. James Wood, and we've got a gold autograph. Dari Lorenzo, 32 out of 50 for the Strohs. That'll be for Mike. I don't remember the... Who had Luis Castillo? Bonds was a free agent, right? Yeah, that's what I, that's what I thought. This might this might have been a. This might have been a bad trade. Austin Martin, let's see how that works out for the Blue Jays. Going down the line. Oh, the Giants had Luis Castillo? I don't remember that. There's Elijah Cabell for St. Louis. That'll be for Andrew. Last spot, Mojo. Now that I'm thinking about it, I guess I'm thinking more like, more like I guess teams that have traded away future stars, like or it's, it's future stars early in their career when they're prospects, like Tatis Jr. or Luis Castillo is a good example, Pedro Martinez, Jeff Bagwell. But Gilo saying when the Royals traded John Damon Beltran, they got pretty much nothing for them. Wayne Wright for for Drew and Marrero. Transactions bringing back some memories. We got Diego Rincons, two eighty out of three ninety nine lime green paper for my rivals, the Giants. Number 24 organizational prospect. That'll be for Fred and the Giants. Fred won that team in a filler. There is Alan Serta. 166 at 250. Purple Lava. Yeah, the one that sticks in Greg's craw would be uh, trading Joe Nathan and Francisco Liriano for A.J. Pruszynski. Is this guy? Is this guy playing? Lucio. Gilo has a Johnny Damon Royals auto that you're oddly fond of. I feel like Johnny Damon was always a, always a very, a fan favorite for any team that he he seemed to be on. Seemed to be an instant fan favorite. Oh, but he's he's not he's not called up yet. Yeah, we've been hearing about. Uh, We've been hearing about Marco Luciano for a little while. Yeah, that's a good one, Tim. Yelich. I think the Marlins moved Yelich thinking that this was like pre, before Yelich kind of discovered power, I, I want to say.
But yeah, Yelich being traded from the Marlins maybe a year or two earlier than the Marlins would have liked. If they kept him around for a couple more years, that could have been a different story. Greg's thinking the dumbest trade ever may be uh, Expos getting rid of Randy Johnson and then the Mariners then getting rid of Randy Johnson. Did, did the Mariners trade Randy Johnson? I thought that was a free agent deal, but... Got Wilman Candelario, Andrew, and the Royals. Bowman first autograph. Gilo is a Royals fan. Tell us a little bit about Wilman Candelario. Now he signed when he was 17. Got Freddie Garcia and some other young players. I didn't realize that was a trade. Got Blaze Jordan, purple paper to 199 for Boston. That's going to be for Mike. Johnson for Freddie Garcia and Carlos Guillen. And then the and then the Diamondbacks won a World Series. There he is, there's Marco again. Shortstop, huh? Is he planning to play at shortstop? I mean, these days, I feel like uh, a lot of players can can play multiple positions. So there's there's Jose Fermin for Mark Bassett, Cleveland. This is for you. I guess Brandon Crawford's not getting any younger. There's Jose Rodriguez, Aqua Shimmer to 125. Gilo has nothing about Wilman. That's okay. I don't think I know too much about the Dodgers draftees that are here too. But this is why I enjoy breaking this because it's a good chance to learn about all these guys. Wait, he went to the Astros before Arizona? So that Mariners deals with the Strohs?
A's gave up some shortstop ads and Russell to the Cubs. John Lester. Then got Lester back. Um, well, the, the A's, mo, mo, mostly out of like financial necessity, I mean, you could build an all-star team of the players that they've traded away you know, over the last couple decades, few decades. It's Francisco Alvarez to 50. I think the Padres, too. I think the Padres, especially in the 80s, I think Padres traded away. They could have had... I feel like they could have had Ozzie Smith and uh, and like Dave Winfield on the same team and Tony Gwynn or something like that in the 80s. But they've, they've traded away a lot of guys... You know, early in their career. I think the A's, same thing with the A's. They've traded away, but again, I mean, maybe this was out of financial necessity for the Padres too, but the A's in recent decades have had to do that too. I mean, there's Alejandro Hidalgo, Purple Chrome Auto, 153 out of 250 for Mark B and the Angels. All right, we are halfway through this jumbo case break, ladies and gentlemen. So we are we are doing the uh, next four boxes here. Good luck. Yeah, rough times for the Reds, that's for sure. Got three wins so far. I, I think. I think if everybody was healthy, they'd be a little more competitive. But I think the problem is, is that the team was a little thin to begin with. So even even healthy, they probably would 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 struggle. But not this bad, you know. Then then you got some guys that just haven't been healthy. I think Luis Castillo's been on the IL. I think they put Joey Votto on the IL. I think Jonathan India is on the IL. Yeah, Hunter Green gave up five homers today. I mean, he's got some electric stuff, but... Location might be a bit of an issue for him. And got Andrew Benintendi. He's been hitting well. Got him on my fantasy team. Purple paper for the Royals. That'll be for Andrew. For the Phillies, Fuchsia Lava to 199, Yosar Garcia. And there is uh, Brian Bello, Bowman first autograph for the Bow Sox. Mike, Mike C with the Red Sox. Number six Red Sox prospect. Yeah. 
There's Michael Triana, 102 out of 299. Speckle autograph for the Reds, Mark, with the red legs. And there's Kevin Alcantara to 299. Cubs, Speckle, on hell with that one. Came over in the Rizzo trade. And your third autograph of this box is for my Dodgers, Jose Ramos, 126 out of 499. That's Jeff with my Dodgers. Won that in a filler. Let's see what he's about. Rated number 16 prospect in the Dodgers chain. All right. Capable of awe inspiring homers. Okay. Terrific arm. All right. There you go, Jeff. All right, and there's Jose Ramos again, 80 at 399 green paper. A little bit of a dent on the bottom there, Jeff. But a lime green paper going your way. <laughs> I like that. I like that question, Greg. Every team has every fan has someone in the bullpen that they absolutely hate. Who is it for you? <laughs> Greg's like, man, there's so many options. Sam Long, Tyler Beatty. Um, I think for me was was recent Dodgers middle reliever Pedro Baez, I think his name was. It always always was frustrating. Joe Kelly too. Joe Kelly seems to do great pitching against the Dodgers, but when he was on the Dodgers. I mean, even if the numbers say otherwise, it was always just hard to convince me. All right. Next box. Bowman Baseball. Eight box jumbo. Pick your team three. Good luck, everybody. Onwards. Greg can't stand Jake McGee or Rogers. Rogers is the guy that has his that the twin brother on the Padres, right? Uh, that orange angle is crazy, though. 
I feel like that's got to jam people up, even if he doesn't have the velocity, though. For the Rays, there's uh, Herberto Hernandez, 368 out of 499, Tampa Bay Rays, Tamoya. Got some green paper, right? Kelvin DeCastro to 99 for Fred and the Blue Jays. There's Garrett Cole and an autograph. Garrett Cole green paper to 99 for Anthony and the Yankees. I like how full the green color looks this year. I feel like the colors are a lot more bold in the parallel. Then there's Larry Ernesto. For Mark B and the Brew Crew. Turn this camera around to the desk again. And we got Eddie's Leonard. Gotta, he's got to learn how to use the canvas a little bit more here. Eddie's. This goes to the Dodgers, Jeff. But he's the number 18 Dodgers prospect, though. Yeah, Jansen kind of fell off for a season and a half and looked pretty bad for a little bit, but actually had a really great season last year. Kind of, I think, kind of priced, him, priced himself out of the of the Dodgers, believe it or not, and took that deal with the with the Braves. He kind of rediscovered his, uh, not as lights out as he used to be, but I think he kind of rediscovered his cutter last year. It was pretty effective. I think his numbers have been pretty good for the Braves. Last I checked this season. And there's James Triantos 
486 out of 499. It's on hell with the Cubs. Number 11 Cubs prospect, according to MLB.com. All right, next jumbo box coming up. And again, we'll do an autograph recap. I don't know why I top loaded that one, but we'll do an autograph recap at the uh, at the end, of course. box. Tani had a pretty incredible day. Carlos Aguirre. Aguiar, maybe? Speckle, 267 out of 299 for Darren and the Twins. Tyler Soderstrom, paper to four ninety nine. And we got Christian Roa for the Reds. Mark with the Reds. Kind of looks like a little face right here. Right? Is that, I think is he intentionally doing that?
Noel V. Marte. And the third auto of the box is Adam Mako. 37 out of 250 purple chrome auto. For uh, the Mariners. That's going to go to Derek. Number 12, Mariners prospect. Nice. All right, so those are your three autos of the box. Let's see if we got any parallels. Nice, Zach Veen. Magenta, Magenta, Fuchsia, Lava. Top 10 pick right there for the Rocks. That'll be for Andrew. Blaze Jordan. Noel V. Marte, Red. High five futures, four out of five. Nice one, Mariners. Derek Gordon with the spot that he won from the filler for the filler. Gets randomized, the Mariners. Gets the out of five and under. That's a train whistle. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo woo. Nice. 17 is super fractor yet, but we have seen a number of out of fives in these cases that we've done. Got a Torkelson speckle to uh, 299 for Brian and the Tigers. All right, not a bad box. Got the out of five, speckle, purple. And here comes the final box of 2022 Bowman Baseball. Eight box jumbo, pick your team number three. Appreciate everybody making this happen. Who's my least favorite Dodger of all time? That's a good question. Um, yeah, it's got to be one of those like relievers that we were talking about earlier. Like Pedro Baez has always frustrated me. You know, Joe Kelly. I know he put up some good numbers like one year, but Joe Kelly has always bothered me. Um, uh, Hanley Ramirez? No, I like Hanley Ramirez. I just didn't like that he, he had that error that prevented Kershaw from having a perfect game, which is also a game that I passed on. I could have gone to that game. No, I don't mind Machado. Like, you know, I mean, I wouldn't put him up in my as my favorite player. But I didn't really hate him. I, I mean, he got traded from the, the only team he knew. Got put into a situation. Got thrown into the Dodgers, and he was supposed to be like this offensive savior for the Dodgers and blah blah blah. It was just a weird situation. I mean, overall, the Dodgers, the recent Dodgers front office has been have been really good with trades, but that was one of the, one of the misses. You can't win them all. Oh, and Oscar Colas, Chrome Prospect autograph redemption for the White Sox. Dale with the White Sox. First of the three autos, the final three autos. There's Robbie Martin Jr. to 499, refractor for the Rockies, Andrew. 
Yeah, Mookie was a trade. They traded Alex Alex Rodugo, big prospect Jeter Downs, and a couple other players to get Mookie Betts. Trey Turner was a trade too. That was for the that was for Kiebert Ruiz and Josiah Gray. There's Ed Howard, to two ninety nine. Yeah, most of the guys on the Dodgers have have been far have been farm grown, or from trades, or like reclamation projects that have turned out to be turned out to be starters. There's Jose Rodriguez to two fifty. Used to really hate Jeff Kent for going to Dodge. You know, yeah, the Jeff Kent Dodgers experience experience was interesting. Yeah, there was a when when the McCourts owned the Dodgers. There was a weird phase with the Dodgers. You know, after the early '90s, and there was it was a family business, and it got sold to Fox, and then it got sold to the McCourts. So there was a good chunk of time where there's just two bad owners owners in a row. There's Easton Santana, 86 out of 299 for the Cubs, purple chrome. Thankfully, the new ownership has really done a good job. Angel Lozano. Blaze Jordan, purple paper to 250. There needs to be a 30 for 30, Greg, on uh, on on Jeff Kent and Barry Bonds and their relationship in those years. I want to see a 30 for 30 on that. And the last autograph of the break, 10 out of 100, Atomic, Yoswar Garcia. Last one of here, of, last one here. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. My brain's fried. Last auto of the break. Eight box jumbo. Pick your team number three. More Bowman in the store, folks. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. Yeah, Greg would want to see that too. I'd want to see that. There's Corey Seager looking weird in a ring. Eh, doesn't actually the actually looks okay in a Rangers uniform. Goes to Mark. I don't know. Barry should give the people what they want. The the full story. I want Jeff Kent and Barry Bonds interviewed. And that, my friends, is that. The break is over. I think it was a nice... Let's do a recap. I think it was a nice one, too. Sometimes you lose track during an hour-long break. Hey, what did we actually pull? It got some atomic, a lot of color. The out of five. All right. Some pretty good stuff here, ladies and gentlemen. So thanks, everybody, for watching, for breaking with us. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com, and I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.